Let's power on for the first time. I won't make you sit through the entire boot sequence, but normally it takes about 45 seconds to get up to the main menu where you can enter commands. This first boot is a little different. It immediately asks for a bed leveling, and then it'll bring it up to temperature to do so. Sorry about the dark video of the mechanisms themselves in these videos, but I had to turn the iris down on the camera because of the very bright screen that they provide. Being the owner of several previous 3D Wax models, I was a little caught off guard by the gyrations and the way that the 2X does its bed leveling. Now it scrapes across the bed to sort of clean any particulates off the head of the nozzle. I believe it uses the metal head to complete an electrical circuit in order to touch on certain parts of the bed to check height and leveling. It does make slight scrape patterns in the back edges of the bed, but they note in the manual that this won't harm any future printing. Take a look at these small metal cutouts in the front left, front right, and rear center. That's the places it can touch and complete the circuit. It'll gyrate for a while, touching the pads and moving around the bed, and then it'll come back and give you an indication as to what it thinks you should do using the adjustment knobs, how many clicks, and what direction in order to level the bed where it thinks it should be leveled. This is the assisted bed leveling. I'll turn the adjustment knobs according to what it told me on the screen. It now reruns the entire leveling process with the adjustments made by the knobs to see whether or not it thinks it's level now. And as expected, it now tells me the bed is level. Being that this is a dual extruder model, even though the bed is leveled, you still have to calibrate both the nozzles so that they are in alignment in the X and Y axes. And to do that, we need to load some filament. Something that caught me off guard was that this cartridge of filament on the left, number one, actually loads into the nozzle on the right, and cartridge two on the right loads into the nozzle on the left. They're crisscrossed. The nozzle to be loaded will be brought up to an appropriate temperature, and the cartridge will start feeding the filament through the mechanism over to the nozzle. And after a longer time than I expected due to the length of the filament path, the filament appears here in the tube and feeds down into the nozzle. Now with both of the filament cartridges loaded, it appears that it's going to print these patterns of lines in the horizontal and vertical direction, and you're going to have to enter key values that tell it which ones look physically in alignment with each other, kind of like it does on an inkjet printer when you do a head alignment. This is with the lid open. Listen how quiet it is. You hear birds in the background outside. You hear cars from my neighbors. I hear these fans going and the power supply fan. That's about it. It's now switched over to the other cartridge and is printing in the blue filament for this alignment pattern. And I just noticed, once it gets past the first layer and goes to the layers above that, then the fan kicks in here in the front. And this front fan is for cooling the PLA, whereas the top fan cools the extruder block itself. I like the location of these fans versus the other models. These are symmetric right down the front. Some of the other ones had the fans on the side and might have created warping problems. After the patterns are done printing, what they want you to do is look at these two patterns and assess which of the blue and white lines are in alignment the best with each other on both the horizontal and vertical patterns. For example, the vertical pattern on the right, the lines are numbered from the left, one, two, three, four, five, and so on up to line 11 on the far right. Far left is line one on the vertical pattern, far right is line 11. The horizontal pattern on the left hand side here is numbered from the top, one, two, three, four, five, and so on down to the bottom, which is line 11. You look at the vertical and horizontal patterns, you figure out 
which blue and white lines are best in alignment with each other, and they're the numbers you type in to the screen. I enter these horizontal and vertical numbers into the XY calibration screen and save it. I'm given the option to print another alignment pattern to make sure that everything is good. I'll remove this initial print from the bed. This flexible bed makes breaking it free pretty easy. The first print may be a little more difficult because it's new and it's very thin. It's only a few layers high on this print, but it's coming off pretty easily. I noticed there's some oil or something on my bed here. I like to use a microfiber cloth to keep my bed clean with little alcohol if necessary. And this magnetic surface makes snapping it back in a breeze. And before I go any further, I want to get this thing on a wired or wireless network and make sure I do a firmware update. And it seems that it's found that I'm several versions of firmware behind, actually about six months behind. So we'll let this download and install for about five or 10 minutes, and then I'll be ready to go.